Hello, and welcome back to Loud and Pretty Average Gaming. This is part 16 of the Grimoire series in Destiny, and in this video, we'll be reading about our allies within the tower. To start with, we'll read about the Speaker. There has always been a Speaker, an anonymous High Priest with a mysterious and powerful connection to the Traveller and its ghosts. In all the centuries of the city's history, the Speaker's great work has never changed. To guide new Guardians, heal the Traveller, and raise our crippled Protector from its slumber. Next, we have the leaders of the Vanguard. The Titan Vanguard, Commander Zavala, Bashun Yu, we struggle after. Undated battle notes. Zavala has never shied from hard decisions. His life bends under a double weight of honor and duty, each act of service more exhausting, each victory more costly. Zavala continues anyway. He has never had time for anything softer than iron. The Hunter Vanguard, Cade 6. Cade 6 was a daring hunter with a fast ship, a quick gun hand, and an eye on the legendary Vault of Glass. Of course, he couldn't say no to a challenge. Not even the notorious Vanguard Dare. He lost the bet, to his immense regret. Now, following the footsteps of his fallen friend, and Brask, it is Cade's turn to oversee his far-flung brethren as the hunter Vanguard in the tower. He works dutifully, but longs for a chance to get back into the fight. The Warlock Vanguard Ikura Rei Ikura Rei's second life has been long and colourful. As an iconoclastic new guardian, she made a reputation in the Crucible and in the halls of the Warlock scholarships as an outspoken, unrelenting opponent with no practice for dogma or etiquette. That reputation became a burden, and Ikura chose to travel alone, flying reconnaissance across the worlds of the inner solar system. Shot down again and again, she and her ghost survived against all odds, apparently preferring the wilderness to the company of her fellow guardians. When Ikara finally returned to the city to rest, her hard-won knowledge and seasoned temperament commanded the respect of her fellow warlocks. She now serves in the vanguard as a mentor and leader, carrying the memory of her wandering days as a link to the rising guardians. The Crucible Handler, Lord Shax. Lord Shax is one of the heroes of the Battle of the Twilight Gap having led the counterattack that pushed the Fallen from the city walls. Fearing that another full-scale assault would be more than the city could repel, Shax chose to stay in the city to mentor guardians in the Crucible. One day Shax vows to return to the war beyond the city, but only after he is confident that the fires of the Crucible have forged a new generation of warriors. On to the faction reps. Future war cult, Lakshmi II. There is nothing Lakshmi likes more than secrets. Her origins are unknown, her appearance in the city was abrupt. She caught select guardians for initiation into the higher mystery of a future war cult, espousing a brutal philosophy of endless struggle. Those who can tolerate Lakshmi's mocking hints and bloody-minded philosophy find her surprisingly good company. She seems to take genuine joy from her work, as if the secrets she guards have taught her to treasure every moment. Dead Orbit, Arak Jalal, Jalal is a man driven by the ghost of a dead future. Critics accuse Dead Orbit of nihilistic fatalism, and Jalal would be the first to agree that the Earth is lost. The city is a fatal trap. The Iraqs have no time for sentiment, only an alien miracle preventing human extinction during the collapse. Jalal dreams of a diaspora to come, humanity ascendant, scattered across the stars too far flung from any single threat to reach. Jalal's utilitarian practices drives him to bend the laws and break the rules in the name of Dead Orbit's great project. When the ultimate goal is human survival, any sacrifice can be justified. New Monarchy, Executor Hadeo. An upstanding citizen, Hadeo was once known for his lavish gifts to children and the elderly. Since he moved from Plastil Manufacturing to the New Monarchy, he has been less forthcoming about his business and less free with his funds. But as one of the public faces of the new monarchy, he speaks with genuine passion and conviction about the possibilities of a united future. Now onto the postmaster, Cardi 5530. Stationed in the Tower Plaza, Cardi 5530 welcomes guardians home from the frontier, delivers urgent messages and tracks lost items. Cardi has adopted a colloquial repartee with the guardians who frequent the tower. Whether this is a function of intricate sub-programming or a learned behaviour is unknown. The Cryptarch, Master Rahul. Master Rahul's insatiable curiosity drove him to the tower, where, 
As resident crypto archaeologist, he can work directly with guardians returning from the frontier. He decrypts matter engrams as a free service, and when he builds trust with a particular guardian, he is happy to offer rare engrams for sale. Although the scarcity of these artifacts forces him to ask for glimmer in compensation, Rahul's true love is history. He treats each new find as a chance to understand the glory of the Golden Age, or the terrible truth of the Collapse. Listen carefully to his murmurings. He may be the first to understand. Special Orders Tess Everest Tess earned her place in the tower working as a troubleshooter, a fixer with a solution to any kind of problem. Her connections go everywhere. It is difficult to make her speak about her monographs in abstract algebra, or the string of peculiar jobs she's worked, but a word in her ear can open doors in surprising places. The Guardian Outfitter, Eva Levanti. Eva Levanti provided services in the tower long before she actually took place in it. Guardians would call for her work again and again, looking for marks of distinction, both new and old, and she began to craft emblems and shaders for the bold and discerning. These days, she has set up a shop in the tower, taking quiet pride in the Guardians who train, fight, and fall under her signs. The Shipwright, Amanda Holiday, Born on the road, daughter of pilgrims, Holiday grew up fixing and scavenging, maintaining the vehicles that saved her family from the wilderness. Her talent for engineering and her familiarity with Golden Age relics made her a leader among the tower's shipwrights. The terrors of Holiday's childhood galvanized her. She knows and respects the dangers that press against the city's walls, and her drive to rebuild the city's aerospace capabilities is driven as much by pragmatism as by her love of flight. The Gunsmith, Banshee 44. Few merchants of the tower serve as vital function as Banshee 44. His knowledge of weapons is encyclopedic, but don't ask him where it comes from. Banshee's mind and body have absorbed incredible punishment over the ages. He grapples with fragments of memory, the shrapnel of ancient ordeals that return to haunt him. Agent of the Nine, Zer. Zer sells objects of legendary power. He accepts his own currency in service of his own enigmatic goals or those of equally cryptic masters. Mysterious, too, is the nature of his presence in the tower. Does he have some arrangement with the vanguard or the speaker? Are there those among the guardian elite who understand Zer's nature and ultimate purpose? Or have all efforts to control his comings and going simply failed? The Iron Banner Rep, Lord Saladin. A hero to the city and a legend in his own right, Saladin Forge led the city's defence during the battle for the Twilight Gap. His protégés, Commander Zavala and Lord Shax, now lead the tower's vanguard and crucible respectively. Saladin remains close to Zavala, though his relationship with Shax has been strained since the Twilight Gap. The Iron Banner seeks great champions to lead the fight against the darkness. It was born to honour the Iron Lords and their efforts in the earliest days of the city. The Queen's Emissary, Petra Venge, Petra is an operative of the Queen of the Reef. Though she has long made the tower her home, it is no secret where her allegiance lies. The Frames Frames are simple automata built in the city. Although not equipped with true general sentience, they are nevertheless useful for cleaning, maintenance, and service tasks. Frames do have the ability to learn, and many develop quirks of personality and behaviour over long lifespans. The Vanguard Quartermaster Ronnie 5530. As trustworthy as frames come, Ronnie 5530 was designed to smooth troubled waters. Cade has spent long hours trying to evoke any hint of frustration in his distant machine cousin, but Ronnie remains exquisitely composed. The Crucible Quartermaster, R-Site 9940. No discounts, big shot. R-Site 9930 is the last of Lord Shax's personal combat frames. When he chose to remain in the city to oversee the Crucible, Shax had our site's combat systems deactivated and rebooted with the tower's more civil vendor protocols. Our site's memory banks still remember the battles he has seen. This knowledge makes our site uniquely qualified to equip guardians for combat. His outward disdain for untested guardians is a combination of learned behavior, a byproduct of years of service to Lord Shax, and personal experience. His systems may have been reprogrammed, but the love for combat still pulses within his circuitry. The Bounty Tracker, Xander 9940. There are many threats beyond the city's walls. 
To help track and eliminate these dangers, the Vanguard has initiated a bounty system to reward Guardians who take the fight to the city's enemies. Lord Shax, not to be outdone, lays out his own bounties for performance in the Crucible. Xander 9940, a recent product of the city's foundries, tracks every Guardian's progress and dispenses rewards. And finally, Crota's Bane, Eris Morn. Eris Morn is the sole survivor of an ill-fated raid on the Hive's Lunar Fortress. It was Eris and a ragtag fire team who, after the first charge to take back the moon, sacrificed everything to return in search of the one the Hive called Crota. Robbed of her ghost, Eris remained lost among the darkest shadows of the Hellmouth for countless cycles. Despite all the odds, she endured. Using the very dark, she battled to emerge a changed warrior, driven, some would say obsessed. The Speaker and Commander Zavala find her compulsions a sickness, convinced she has been fully seduced by the shadows. Though her warnings of Crota and his power are often dismissed as madness, Aerith returns to the shadows time and time again, operating as one of Ikara Ray's hidden. A clandestine group of guardians tasked with silently infiltrating enemy strongholds and gathering vital intel for the Warlocks. Thank you for joining me through this video about our allies within the tower. In the next video, we'll be reading about the city's factions. Until then, I'll see you next time.